everybody. Roger says, hey. If you've noticed, he has a new hat. It's because we're learning about the 95th Rifles today, and so he's got one of their hats on. At least I hope that's one of their hats. <laughs> it's also a little small, so we may have to work on that a little bit. So, why am I doing a video on the 95th Rifles? Well, it just so happens that I am starting the Sharp series on my Patreon. I'll probably be posting shorter, like, edited versions of it here on YouTube, but I'm gonna be watching all 14, 16 episodes, something like that, of it. The whole thing, all the way through, each episode looks like it's really close to almost two hours long, so it's gonna take me a while to watch it. But I did a poll recently on Patreon asking people what I should start with for my like Friday movie nights. That people on Patreon vote for it and Sharp won pretty resoundedly. And it has some people also comment that I should learn more about the 95th Rifles before I get into Sharp because apparently that's pretty much what the entire series is about. So probably a good idea to kind of know what I'm watching. Now I did look up the 95th Rifles here and I see that they are a, a rifle brigade and it says the Prince co Consort's own. Don't really know what that means. The Rifle Brigade, the Prince Consort's own, was an infantry rifle regiment of the British Army formed in January 1800 as the experimental corps of riflemen to provide sharpshooter scouts and skirmishers. They were soon renamed the Rifle Corps. Now, I think I remember these guys from the Napoleonic War series that I did from Epic History TV. A lot of you guys kind of told me the way you recognize them is by their green jackets. I think that's, I got the, I got the right guys. But let me know if I'm thinking about something else because it's been a while since I've seen those videos. But I also looked down here and I wanted to know if the 95th rifle still exists and the legacy is that the regiment remained basically until 1816 when they were renamed the Rif Rifle Brigade as we just learned about in honor of their achievements during the Peninsular War and the Waterloo campaigns. Oh, here's another one. What rifle did they use? They used the Baker rifle? Officially known as the Pattern 1800 Infantry Rifle, it was a flintlock rifle used by the rifle regiments of the British Army during the Napoleonic Wars. A flintlock, not flintlock. I don't really know uh, firearms. I, I don't own any. I've never shot them before other than a BB gun, if that counts. <laughs> Probably not. Um, I shot a laser gun too, playing laser tag but I don't know what a flintlock is uh I do know that you had to like ma like use a match I think at one point to actually light a gun for it to go off but I think that that was like back like 100 years prior to this so I'm not sure you guys can explain to me what a flintlock is I guess I'll probably figure it out this video actually might tell us now that I think about it I just randomly searched on YouTube for a video about the 95th rifles I was hoping there would be more of like a documentary style video but I all I found was uh apparently this lady interviewing this guy who's a reenactor of the 95th rifles or something uh so I actually don't know what this is gonna be about but I think it might show like some of the firearms some of the stuff that they use hopefully he'll kind of like talk about the 95th rifles and what they are and stuff it's not very long it's only a four minute video but i am looking forward to this look at the 95th rifles even if it is a reenactor because i really like all of their reenactment stuff it really kind of brings history to life you know so let's take a look at this hopefully it's interesting Hello, so we're here with Vince and he's going to talk to us a little bit about um, who you are Vince. and uh, <laughs> what, what period you're from. Okay, well I'm Corporal Law of the uh, 95th Rifles. Mm -hmm. um, we were uh, from the Experiment Corps of Riflemen set up in 1800 and were in campaign all the way through the Napoleonic War until 1815 when we were taken out of the numbered uh, regiments and made into the Rifle Brigade. Right, okay. Uh, and can you tell us a bit about your your lovely uniform and, and what, what purposes did it serve and the kit you've got with you? Well, obviously you can see the main difference between the, the usual British Army in their scarlets. Uh, we're in green. Uh, yeah. It's something that... Oh, so we call them scarlets? Like... You call them the red, uh, red coat scarlets? Is that the, like the UK version of it? We always say, we just call it the red coats over here in the US, but I, I've never heard it called the scarlets before. That's interesting. The usual British Army in their scarlets. Uh, we're in green. Uh, yeah. It's something that the sort of the lights that were armed with rifles were were, were doing, taken from sort of the, the German Jaeger battalions. 
um, that were sort of loyal to uh, King George. And obviously that is one of our other key differences between us and the normal British Army is the rifle, right. rather than the Brown Bess, which was a smoothbore weapon. So this was far more accurate, it took longer to load, but uh, because of our sort of skirmishing capabilities, much more effective and much more accurate over okay. a much longer range. Great, brilliant. So that was kind of a pioneering piece of kit, was it? Uh, yes, well, th um, there are some earlier rifles in the British Army, but they never really took, caught on. So it wasn't until this period that, um, that it really did catch on. And from this point forward, were taken up more and more. Great. So the time of the First World War, when almost everybody had a rifle, yeah, rather yeah. than a smoothbore gun. OK, and what else do you have? OK, what, what? so he's, he's saying there's a difference between a rifle and a smoothball gun. Is that what he's saying? I just assumed everybody had rifles, but I guess a rifle is a... See, I really don't know anything about firearms. I don't know what constitutes a rifle versus something else. So I guess guns before this were not called rifles, they're called something else. What are the guns today called? Are they rifles? Like the M, uh, M6, is it M16s and stuff like that? Are those rifles or are those just machine guns? Those wouldn't be rifles. Would they, they're, they're machine guns. Man, I feel so stupid right now. I also like how he's talking about it like he's part of the actual 95th rifles back in the day. <laughs> it's pretty, like I'm not, I'm not making fun of it. It's just pretty cool. The First World War, when almost everybody had a rifle, yeah. rather than a smoothbore gun. Okay, and what else do you have? What, what's kind of on your belt, and what other kit would you have needed? Uh, well, you? as you can see, we've got the, sort of the fairly standard um, uh, ammunition pouch, which would have right. held our cartridges for loading. Uh, a ball pouch, so we could load sort of uh, just powder and ball as well. Um, the sword bayonet, which is longer than the bayonet for the brown bess, but overall What's length dead, would be the same as the brown bess with a uh, with the sword bayonet on. Wow. And that was for fighting That's in squares a sword, not cavalry. a bayonet. Okay, and so it, it, would that be used if you'd run out of ammunition? Is that kind of your... Um, it, it's very much a defensive role, such that um, if cavalry were around, you know that instead of being in line, we'd form square, and you would then, everybody would attach their swords and the rifles, bayonets for the rest of the redcoats, and sort of stand with them sort of held out, such that the, the horses wouldn't come on to the, uh, the squares. So right. it's purely defensive. So you'd be right in there amongst all the action. It would be pretty... Do you think she has any idea what he's talking about? <laughs> Thankfully, I do, because I would had the benefit of watching the Napoleonic Wars videos, and I've seen this, the... Actually, in the... What is the over... What video was it that I was watching? One of the later ones that I was watching where they were showing this, the square corner, and I actually pointed that out as, like, a cool painting that... Um, that I like, but yeah, all of these little paintings right here, I really like seeing this stuff. As long as there aren't like a bunch of dead horses and stuff, <laughs> there'd be headings going on. So right. it's purely defensive. So you'd be right in there amongst all the action. It would be pretty... When cavalry arrived, then yes, we would have to have sort of gone in and joined sort of the line instead of sort of being out and skirmishing because in loose order against cavalry, we would have been decimated. Right. And, and what's the horn you've got there? Uh, this is actually a powder magazine which contains more black powder, so it's not actually right. a horn. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cow horn, but yes. it's not a, a musical. It's not a... <laughs> so, no, that just contains a, uh, a spare magazine of powder for, uh, for use. OK, great. And, and are there any sort of okay, great. important to the, the frilly things on your shoulders, or is that kind frilly of just decorative? I mean, the, the shoulder frills are fairly standard. What you do have differences is the colours of the facings. Okay. As with the red coats, uh, we have black facings. The other famous rifle unit was the uh, 5th 60th, who had red facings instead of black facings. Okay. Uh, but if you look at the red coats, they all have, all have different colour facings denoting which red coats. Well, they call red coats. Okay, too. great. Okay. And the hat, I mean, it's fantastic. Yes, the, the, the tall Shaco. I, is it comfortable? Shaco um, cap. You, you would have thought that if you were sort of skirmishing through trees, it would easily get knocked off. But um, yeah, you know, it, yeah. it was standard equipment of the time because it does give you extra height, extra bearing and um, makes you look more menacing. It, it certainly does. You, you is that taller, seriously? Yes, yeah. Is that seriously why they're designed like that? Is to make the soldiers look more intimidating? Like I guess when I think about it today, it kind of looks a little ridiculous. You know, if, if I saw somebody coming at me with that hat, I wouldn't take them seriously. But I guess back then, like that was the thing, right? It's the same as like our helmets that we have today, like the night vision goggles. 
that's totally normal to us now, but this was totally normal to them back then too. I didn't know that that's why they were like so tall though, is to make them look taller and more intimidating to the enemy. So learn something new there. Actually, I learned something new with this whole video. Like this is, this is pretty cool. Like looking at what you guys would call kit. What we would call equipment over here, I guess. Okay, well, not a huge look at the 95th rifles themselves and like what they, well, kind of talked about the skirmishing, kind of what they would do if, you know, cavalry came to them, they would come and rejoin the line to kind of uh, bolster their defense a little bit. And just, you know, now I have an idea about what their uniforms are and the stuff that they're carrying and stuff. So I definitely have a better idea about the 95th rifles than I did going into this. I suppose that with Sharp, I will probably learn a lot about the 95th fifth rifles just by watching that. So I don't know if like a full-blown documentary is really necessary before watching Sharp. Just as long as I have some idea about who the 95th rifles were and uh Again, like some of the kit that they were carrying around and stuff and kind of what their jobs were. I kind of find it interesting that Sharp focused on that. Of course, I don't know, like I haven't seen it, but from what I gather, it seems like Sharp focuses on the 95th rifles, which is a very interesting uh, thing to, I guess, focus on for an entire series, because you would think that they would be right in there with, like, kind of the main guys, but, like, I think it's pretty cool that uh, we're going to kind of see sort of the, like, the special forces of the Napoleonic Wars, in a way, I suppose. So anyway, thank you guys for suggesting this on Patreon for me. Um, I feel a little bit more prepared going in into Sharp, even though this was just a really short video. So anyway, if you guys are interested in watching the entire Sharp series with me, unedited you'll be able to do that over on Patreon. The link to it will be down in the description in the pinned comment. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you like and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And again, links to my social media, Patreon, Discord, all of that down in the description and pinned comment. Roger here and I, thank you guys for watching as always. Looks like we got the right hat, so... Yeah, I just might have to get a little bit bigger size there, Roger. Either that or we'll have to shrink your head a little bit. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time.